Okay, so dito tayo sa interview setup kung ano ang dapat uh, itsura kung saan kayo magkakandak ng interview. Okay, so sometimes we have to do things we are not always comfortable with. Uh, this topic may seem elementary to the interview dynamic, but from training and research, we see novices and experienced interviewers not doing what is best and they have plenty of reasons or excuses. Despite what some may ignore, the arrangement of interview room remains an important aspect toward, toward the success in your interviews. So strategizing how to maximize the setup is something we should always consider, be it a victim, witness, or subject interview. This strategizing should be done before and throughout the interview. This dynamic applies to criminal investigations, administrative uh, audits, and any important interactions you intend to have. So being a future law enforcement officer, uh, maaaring yung iba sa inyo maging interrogator then or in investigator and slash interrogator yun nga. so you also have to consider the room where you will be conducting your interviews or interrogations kasi it may have some psychological effect and it may help you uh, get a confession from the person you are interrogating sabi nga dyan, this may seem elementary so baka ang tingin nyo dyan, basic lang but still uh, we have to know what is the best to be used during interrogations and interviews. So when setting up a room for conducting an interview, there are a few basic rules the interviewer should keep in mind. Aside from making the interview we feel as comfortable as possible, the interview room should also facilitate clear communication, including nonverbal. This means that physical barriers should be minimized between the interviewee that might block the interviewer's view of them. So, hindi pwede na may kung ano-anong harang doon sa interview room. There are good reasons for this. Firstly, a physical barrier such as a table can act as a psychological barrier. In a situation in which open communication is sought, putting up barriers obviously goes against the wall. Kung maalala ninyo yung uh, mga na-discuss natin before, tsaka yung video na, na pinapanood ko sa inyo, may part doon na sinasabi ang upuan nung in-interrogate dapat walang gulong. Tapos yung sa interrogator, dapat may gulong. In order for the interrogator to later on come close to the person being interrogated. Yun, iniiwasan nila yung physical barrier at that sense. Okay. Uh, those barriers serve to diminish the effect of rapport, which is something that must be maximized throughout the interview process. Another reason to keep furniture out of the way is to provide the interviewer with a full body view of the interviewee. This is important when assessing their body language or nonverbal clues. Uh, when he or she is answering questions and providing detail about the incident in question. Now we recognize when minimizing barriers, not only is the interviewer exposed, so are we. So, hindi lang ang tinitignan ay yung ini-interview. Kundi pati ikaw na nag interview or nag interrogate kita na rin yung buong mong katawan kasi nga inalis yun ang physical barrier. As a result, it is incumbent on us as the interviewer to minimize non-verbal behavior that would be distracting, demonstrate a lack of confidence or negatively affect the facilitation of clear communication. So, yun. Uh, bilang isang interrogator, you have to minimize uh, any non-verbal behavior. So, yung mga pagganyan-ganyan mo. Mga paggawa mo ng iba't ibang actions. So, kailangan mabawasan yun. Makontrol mo sila para hindi siya makadistract doon sa ini-interview mo at ang makuha mo lang talaga yung mga information na galing sa kanya. Minsan kasi, di ba, kanyari, ganito, nagkaklase, tapos biglang may nag-unmute. Nakaka-disrupt yun. Alam nyo yun. Kapag nagsasalita ka, pag may biglang nag-interrupt, nakaka-distract. Minsan, makalimutan mo pa yung pinag-uusapan ninyo, yung sinasabi mo. Kaya, kung ikaw ang 
interrogator, kailangan niya mabawasan ang mga ganito, yung mga non-verbal behavior para hindi doon mapunta ang focus nung ini-interrogate mo. At makapag-focus lang siya sa thoughts niya, sa pagbibigay niya ng information. Okay. So although not often admitted, this is one of the main reasons interviewers rear up against this best practice. When, ito, yung author na ginagamit natin dito, sabi niya, when I interview, one of the main responsibilities of my secondary is to make sure I am not adversely affecting the interview. So how important is it? In one homicide case, sabi niya, he examined the impact was clear and very revealing. At one point of the interview, the detective moved the table in the room out of the way and pulled up in front of the suspect and continued questioning. So, tinabi niya yung lamesa tapos lumapit siya doon sa, sa ini-interrogate niya. Later, after sentencing, the suspect was shown that scene and asked his thoughts. Uh, he responded that at, that at that point, he was concerned that his guilt would show. So how interesting it wouldn't be his guilt that showed. But that ha that is how he processed it. He went on to say that he knew he was bouncing his foot and now he needed to control that. Ito kasi yung ibang non-verbal behaviors na would uh, help determine guilt. Yung katagalog nagkukuyakoy. Tagalog ba yun? Isaya. Not sure. Pero yun, nagkukuya ko eh. Yung, nagbabounce nga yung paa. Uh, it's a sign daw na kinakabahan ng isang tao and therefore would eventually uh, dahil nagtatanong ka na tungkol doon sa case, tungkol doon sa guilt. Nung ini-interrogate. Okay. He went on to say that he knew he was bouncing in foot, his foot and now he needed to control that. What we know is that some of these physical actions are clearly connected to psychological thoughts and cognitive activity. I'm up next. So when we set up the room or use a room, we want to minimize barriers in the room. So what are those barriers? Desk conference tables, low sofas, and just think what else you run into. Kahit ano. Kahit anong pwedeng maging physical barrier doon sa loob ng interrogation room. Anything that interferes with seeing the whole person or giving that person a place to hide. So, kailangan makita mo yung buong uh, katawan niya, yung buong pagkataon niya. With someone sitting behind the desk, you lose 50% of body observation if you are sitting across from them. Kasi um, ang nakikita mo na lang yung nasa taas, kung ano yung hindi nakaharangan ng lamesa. But hindi mo nakikita yung hands, yung uh, feet, and other parts of the body. That is the physical aspect. But what about the psychological aspect, aspect of them feeling comfortable protected, and secure behind their desk. We need to change the dynamic to increase cognitive load by removing barriers, which increases our ability to read and detect deception. So ideally, as reflected uh, doon sa diagram na ipapakita ko later on, ito siya, pero mamaya na, we allow them to access the door. So we sit at a conversational distance for four feet, four foot, four feet or less directly in front of them. And if we have a witness or secondary, uh, have them sit off to the side and a little further back. Kasi bilang the main interrogator, you have to take the lead. So yung author sabi niya, personally, I like to use a chair with wheels and the interviewee on a stationary chair so that I have the ability to close or increase the distance as necessary. However, if you can't sit still in a chair with wheels, don't use it as that can be seriously distracting. So other things we want to consider are, first is, what is the size of the room? 
is it too big or for effective communication? Kasi baka magli magliwaliw din siya. Hindi siya makapag-focus doon sa conversation din niya dahil sa sobrang laki na mamangha siya, tingin siya ng tingin sa other, other parts of the room. So are there windows in the room? Don't arrange the room so that the interviewee is looking out a window. Baka magmuni-muni siya doon, hindi, mo na, hindi ka na niya kausapin. So dapat walang bintana. This often allows them to feel like they can escape the interview. So how many people will be present in the interview room? And how do we minimize unwanted participation? You should also take consideration of that. How do we control the room when we are at their location? There are so many elements we could discuss and should consider. But first, things first. Get out from behind your barriers. So yun, ang dami natin sinabi. Ang sinasabi lang dyan, hanggat maaari, huwag kayo maglalagay ng barriers sa interrogation room. Okay. So, uh, this is usually the interview setup. Ito yung pintuan pa papasok at palabas mula dun sa interview room. Then the subject should be placed near the door and then the interviewer and then the witness. The information gathered in a police interrogation room, sometimes called a secure interview room or hard interview room, during an interrogation of a suspect is not just investigative or probative, it is also evidence. As such, great care should be taken in how that information is collected. Police personnel may only have one chance to secure evidence gathered during an interrogation and it must be able to stand up in court. The layout of the interview room and audio or video recording devices are vital to legitimately securing evidence obtained during an interview. Also tantamount to the collection of evidence through the interview is the safety and security of the people in the interrogation or interview room, including the suspect and the interviewer and of the other individuals inside the police facility. Siyempre, uh, dinala natin ang isang suspect sa isang crime. So, he might feel agitated dahil inaakusahan mo siya, guilty man siya o hindi. So, kailangan mapanatili nyo yung safety and security of all the people inside the place where the interrogation is being conducted. Maka police station yan or other police uh, offices. So, the level of security for an interrogation room will differ from that of a soft interview room, also known as a witness or victim interview room, which is used for witnesses and other people not in custody na kailangan mong makuha na ng informasyon. Uh, the layout and security measures for an interrogation room should not only prevent the suspect from leaving the room unauthorized, but should also prevent any unauthorized person from entering the interview room. Kaya hindi pwedeng basta-basta pumasok sa interrogation room. May mga bantay din sa labas nun para hindi hindi ma-distract yung nagkakadak ng interrogation sa loob. Number in size. So there should be at least three interrogation room in a police facility to allow for the simultaneous questioning of multiple individuals. But we know na dito sa Pilipinas, uh, hindi sa lahat ng pagkakataon kaya ito. Sa balik sa ibang mga lugar, payapa naman talaga eh. Ang mga kaso lang nakawan ng chinelas. Kaya, uh, there's no need for that many interrogation rooms in one uh, police station. Pero depende ha. Kung malaki-laking, oo, pati mga nakasampay na damit. Mga ganyang nakawan nga. Uh, ah, de legit yun ha. Ganyan yung mga problema sa ibang probinsya. Nakawan ng chinelas. Yan, nakawan ng mga sinampay mga nakawan ng manok. Yan, kinakatay. Inuulam mo kaya pinapansabong. <laughs> Pero yun, kung dito tayo sa city, 
siguro hindi ganun ang mga kaso natin dito talaga mga patayan o doon nakawan nga lang ng chinelas. So, uh, each room should be large enough for three people and the required furniture but not so large that there is a lot of unutilized space. Katulad itong gamit natin, kung nasan ako, kita, nakikita nyo naman to pag nagpupunta kayo, di ba? Yung interrogation room, pati itong polygraph room. This is a good size. Okay na to. Yung sakto lang siya, hindi masyadong masikip at hindi rin siya masyadong malaki. Sakto lang para sa dalawa o tatlong tao. Okay. So each room should be large enough for three people and re the required furniture, but not so large that there is a lot of unutilized space. Yun nga. A large room with a lot of unnecessary open space could cause the interviewee to be less focused on the subject matter of the interview. Malamang, magpo-focus na siya. Yung katulad yung sinabi natin kanina, mamangha siya sa laki ng kwarto, magliwaliw ang kanyang pag-iisip. A room that is 8 by 10 feet is preferable. The interrogation rooms should be adjacent to the suspect processing area and be within the secure part of the facility. Transporting suspects into or through the main parts of the police station creates unnecessary security risk kapag pinarada mo siya. Okay, walls. The walls of an interrogation room need to provide a high degree of sound proofing. Kaya nga, katulad itong sa likod ko, pag napunta kayo dito sa Krim Lab, kita nyo naman, para siyang styro, pero mataas na uri ng styro. Yan, pang soundproof. Kaya, eto. Kaya dito ako nagkaklase eh. Kasi hindi rin ako masyadong rinig sa labas. Kasi nga, soundproof siya. O yun, dapat soundproof ang interrogation room nyo. It is important for privacy purposes that communications that take place within the room cannot be heard in adjacent rooms or in the hallway. For example, if two suspects are being questioned in two separate interviews and one suspect overhears the other interview, the integrity of both interviews could be compromised. Yung hindi na sila magkasama pero nagkokopyahan pa rin sila. Kaya dapat soundproof. To maximize acoustical privacy, the room perimeter should have a speech privacy potential rating of 85. So, SPP is a measure of speech pri privacy between two spaces. A rating of 85 means that loud speech, even shouting, would not be audibly recognized through the walls. One way to achieve this high SPP rating is to construct the walls using solid core masonry blocks or blocks with concrete filled cores. Additional soundproofing can be achieved with studs and two layers of gypsum board on one or both sides of the block wall with sound attenuation insulation between the studs. The walls should run from the floor deck below to the undesired underside of the deck above to prevent sounds from leaking out above the walls. Nung high school ako, nagbabanda kasi ako, tapos yung isa kong kabanda, may kompleto siyang gamit, drum set siya. Ah, ito, gitara, mga ampli, lahat, pero siya. Tapos, yung isa nilang maliit na kwarto, kinonvert namin uh, studio. Ang nilalagay namin, yung, alam niyo yung tray ng itlog, yung karton, ganun, pinuno namin ng tray ng itlog yung karton na yun, pati yung sa ano to, ceiling. Lagyan din namin. Uh, somehow, nakabawas naman siya sa sa noise na naririnig sa labas pero hindi siya totally soundproof. Iba talaga kapag pinasadya niyong ipa-soundproof. Katulad nga nitong sa uh, kung nasan ako, polygraph room and interrogation room. Mga pinasadya talaga yan na pang soundproof. Ayun. Another advantage of the high walls is to prevent someone from climbing over a potential void between the top of a low wall and the underside of their floor or roof, roof deck above. The solid block construction also prevents escape through the wall. Since holes in the gypsum board or drywall partition can be made relatively easily by kicking through it. Kaya dapat ang pader hanggang, uh, bagasagad siya, hanggang taas talaga. Kasi diba minsan, para makatipid, sa materyales, ang ginagawa, yung pader hindi na sinasakto doon sa ceiling ninyo. 
So, kung ito yung wall, ito yung ceiling, may may space dito. Pero kung gagamitin nyo nga ang isang kwarto para maging interrogation room, hindi dapat ganon. Kailangan, ano, sagad siya. Even the holes that ducks run through are potential places where an escape could occur. All ducks through the walls should have a security mesh inside to prevent a person from crawling out. Okay, next are doors. Doors need to be windowless and flush metal with solid course. <laughs> so, dapat walang bintana. Uh, mga uh, pintuan. It could also create problems if the suspect sees another suspect or witness related to the same crime walk by. In addition, the door should open outward in order to prevent the door being used as a weapon by any person within the room and to prevent anyone from blocking air access into the room. So, dapat, kung nasa labas ka, ang hila ng, hihil, pahila ang pinto. Hindi siya papasok. Okay. Ganito ang magandang setup ng uh, pintuan at pader. So, sabi nga natin, yung pintuan dapat walang Bintana, tapos yung pader hanggang sa taas. Ayan. Then, again, soundproof. Next are ceilings. So, a solid gypsum board ceiling is preferred to help prevent a suspect from crawling up into the ceiling. If a suspended ceiling is used, it should be the type that can have tamper-proof lockdown tiles, not just to prevent escapes from the room through the ceiling, but to also prevent anyone from hiding contraband items above the ceiling. So, dapat um, solid, nga, solid gypsum board ang gagamitin, hindi yung may naaalis. Kasi baka may ilagay siyang droga doon o kung ano, kahit anong contraband niya. Whether a gypsum board or suspended ceiling is used, security mesh should be installed above the ceiling to provide greater protection from ceiling breaches. As is the case with the walls, any ductwork in the ceiling should be protected with security mesh inside the ductwork. Next are floors. Because of the nature of the interview room and the potential for unruly occupants of the room to create messes ranging from dirty shoes to spilled coffee to bodily fluids such as vomit, a floor with a durable finish that is easy to clean is required. Vinyl tile is durable but even with the best intention cleaning schedule, dirt will accumulate between the tiles eventually. A preferred flooring is a seamless poured epoxy on Concrete, so solid dapat. Uh, including a continuous cove base, meaning there should be no sharp corner or seam between the base and the floor where dirt can get trapped. Provide a floor drain either in each interview room or in the hallway outside the rooms to aid the in easier cleanup with a hose mop and broom. Furniture. So there should only be four pieces of furniture inside the interview room. A table, a chair for the interviewer, a chair for the observer, and a chair for the interviewee or suspect. Yun lang. Yun lang yung furniture. La mesa, tatlong upuan. Yun na yun. The suspect's chair must be bolted to the floor and include a cuff bar. Yung hindi siya naaalis, nakabolt na siya sa sahig. Bolting the chair to the floor prevents it from being used as a weapon. Kasi nga, nabanggit natin kanina, the safety and security of the personnel inside the police uh, office or police station is the utmost importance during this uh, interviewing phase. However, don't bolt the chair to the floor. This would prevent police personnel from moving the table out of the way quickly in the case of an unruly suspect. This is the table. These are chairs. Naka-cuff siya doon sa or naka-bolt siya 
doon sa plot. So, overview shot yun na. Mamalito kayo. Okay. Interview recording equipment. The collection of evidence occurs during the interview of a suspect. Therefore, it is imperative to have the proper recording equipment in place in the interview room. Two high-definition IP cameras should be provided in the room as part of the interview recording system to provide adequate co coverage. One camera views the interviewee face on and the second camera views the interviewee views the entire interview from the side. So, dapat isa dito sa harap, tapos isa sa side. Mount the cameras high enough so the place of the interview is not blocked by on, by other people in the room. Place a high-quality microphone. Mahalaga yun. Uh, microphone or lapel. Such as a pressure zone microphone in an un, unobtrusive place in the room such as on the wall. So, ilagay mo yung mic sa pader para hindi siya nakaharang kahit saan. Pressure zone microphones work best when near a broad flat surface. Since the interview recordings are considered evidence, the cameras and microphones are not integrated with any other CCTV security cameras within the facility and should not be viewable in the central security post of the police station. Instead, the video and audio from the interview room should be fed directly to digital recording equipment located in a separate room. This allows police personnel to observe the interview privately and without needing to be present in the interview room. The interviewer can also exit the room and leave the interviewee alone. But still, the interview we monitored and observed by other police personnel. It is important to use a recording system dedicated to the collection of interrogation data, which should not be the same system used by the general security, security camera system. The general security camera system compresses the video and audio and could potentially make parts of a recorded interview Difficult to clearly hear and see. Pag sinabi natin compress, pinaliliit yung file. Parang, di ba pag nag-send ka ng picture sa messenger? Uh, pag nag-send ka ng picture sa messenger, tapos dinownload, dinownload ha? Dinownload yung picture na sinend mo, bumababa yung quality. Kasi ang ginagawa ng messenger, kinocompress niya yung file. Kaya, pag dinownload mo, KB na lang siya. Kilobyte na lang siya imbes na megabyte nung una mo siyang sinin. Kasi nga, uh, ganun ang ginagawa ni Messenger para mabilis mag-load, kinocompress niya. Okay. Uh, technology is always changing but today's police interview recording systems digitally record the interview in high fidelity onto a computer hard drive and can be transferred onto external storage devices such as a DVD or flash drive. Pero hindi na gagamit ang DVD, no? Uh, most likely, ang ginagamit na dyan ay flash drive or mga external uh, drive. Yun. Other devices, light switches and thermostat controls should be on the outside of the interview room so the suspect could cannot tamper with them. There should be no clock visible to the suspect. La dapat ibang uh, relo doon sa interview room. That might serve only as a reminder of how long they have been there. All interview rooms should also be equipped with a duress alarm that can be pushed to report trouble or personnel inside the room. Kung malamang natakil nyo na yan sa subject nyo na security, sabi na natin parang panic button. Pag pinindot mo, dadating yung mga polis. Eto, ganun din. O kaya pag umuorder kayo sa some gift sign, may pinipindot, di ba? Kung mga alam nyo sa kimchi pa po. Ganun. Okay. A best practice is to have an officer stationed immediately outside the interview room while it is in use to monitor it for any emergency situation. Sabanggit na to kanina. This is to maintain the safety and security of all the personnel. Kailangan mo nakatanod sa labas ng interview room or interrogation room. 
since there is no window on the interview room door, this can be achieved by providing a video monitor above the door connected to a CCTV camera inside. The camera and feed should be separate from the equipment, equipment recording the interview for evidence purposes, but it should also be integrated with other security CCTV camera feeds monitored from the police facility's central control post. So here are alternative ideas uh, for your inter interrogation setup. Following the standards and practices for interview or interrogation rooms discussed in this blog uh, will help in the safe and effective administration of suspect interviews. So some feel the interrogation rooms should be designed with finishes that look more like an office and less Spartan than traditional interview rooms. Under this alternative philosophy, softer finishes such as short, short tile carpet and pastel colors are recommended. Taray. Pastel pang lolo nyo. If the interview is shown in court, jurors might see the room as a non-threatening space that was less likely to lead a coercion, lead to coercion of the suspect. So mukhang mas friendly yung kwarto, mukhang um, less intimidating, kaya nga non-threatening daw ang dating. Some of these alternative room layout and design ideas could be taken into consideration by a police department. But it's important to remember that the most important factors driving the design of the interrogation room are collecting interrogation evidence in a way that is compliant with court evidentiary standards and providing a safe and secure space for all involved parties. 